service versus feeder versus branch circuit. So what are the differences between service, feeder and branch circuits? Service, feeder and branch circuits actually contain quite a bit of commonality between them. The biggest common factor is the fact that they all include conductors. Okay, and they are used almost interchangeably in day-to-day -day practice of power systems engineering, especially feeder and branch circuits. But there are some significant differences between all three of them. As you probably remember, in the last lecture, I introduced Article 100 of NEC, and I recommended you to actually go through it. It contains definitions. So in this lecture, we are going to understand the difference between service feeder and branch circuit using NEC Article 100 definition of each one of these terms. So we'll start with service. According to NEC Article 100, service conductors are the conductors or service in general contains conductors and equipment for delivering electric energy from the serving utility to the wiring systems of the premises that are served. Article 230 contains discussion on service. I would recommend you to go through it. And in terms of visualization, over here you can see that your local distribution company or the utility is providing you a feed, a power feed. They, have, they probably have a meter of their own as well for revenue metering. And then they also would have some service equipment in the form of uh, a protective device for isolation, for disconnection purposes. And essentially, the conductors that they're providing up to the terminals, uh, up to the line terminals of your uh, of the disconnect are the service conductors, okay? And from the load terminals, we basically have the feeder, which is owned by you um, as an end user. But everything else prior to that actually belongs to the utility. So they own it and generally they maintain it. What about feeder? Again, we will refer back to NEC article 100 for a proper definition on feeder or at least a code definition on feeder, which says that feeder are basically all circuit conductors between the service equipment, the source of a separately derived system or other power supply source sources and the final branch circuit over current device. Article 215 contains a lot of relevant and important information about uh, feeders. I highly recommend you go through this article at least because uh, it is quite commonly used. So this is very important. Okay, coming back to our visual representation, as I mentioned, on the load side of the disconnect of the service equipment, okay, if you have a disconnect um, or if you have an isolation device essentially on the load side, that's where the feeder begins. And typically the end user uh, would own it, uh, you would maintain it because these are your conductors, okay? So where does the feeder start? We know that this is where the feeder start, but where does it really end? So when you have a branch circuit, and again, we will sort of have to jump into branch circuit a little bit over here. Um, it's, uh, it's basically the conductor that is used uh, from the load side or the final overcurrent device, okay, to the overcurrent, to the final branch circuit overcurrent device, okay. Uh, your end um, load is, in this case, as you can see, for example, is a receptacle. So that receptacle would be protected by either an internal overcurrent pr uh, protective device or a group overcurrent protective device for a bunch of these receptacles. But the conductor between the very end load, okay, and your distribution panel, in this case, as you can see over here, is your branch circuit, okay. So the feeder is the conductor that runs between the service equipment and the final overcurrent device at the end of the feeder. Let us now take a look at article 100 definition of branch circuit. So branch circuit, the best way to identify a branch circuit is actually to start from the end load. In this case, we have a receptacle, okay? You might have a um, lighting fixture, okay? You might have a dishwasher, you might have um, uh, uh, an appliance, okay? So what, whatever your end load is, you start from the end load, okay? And you make your way up to the distribution panel, which would contain 
um, over current protective devices for a lot of such loads okay so this conductor that exists between that panel and your end load is your branch circuit is as simple as that and the conductor that is connected on the line side of that panel a distribution panel it can be a lighting panel uh, it can be a switchboard okay so the conductors from the line side of the overcurrent protective devices or the overcurrent protective device in that panel all the way to the service equipment they classify as feeders okay and then again from the line side of the service equipment uh, up upwards upstream that is all service okay so article 100 definition of branch circuit is that the circuit conductors between the final overcurrent device protecting the circuit and the outlets okay so this is your final overcurrent device which is protecting the circuit and the outlets now over here as i mentioned your end devices might have their own internal protection as well sometimes they would have a very small fuse a 5m fuse a 3m fuse a 1m fuse uh, so that's fine uh, that is all considered then internal wiring okay to that particular fixture to that particular appliance um, that is not something that a typical electrician would be installing okay uh, so uh, the electrician will be installing this branch circuit which you would have to size which you would have to specify as a power systems engineer but then the internal um, overcurrent protection that is all manufacturer's responsibility that is all internal wiring so we are interested in the final overcurrent device at the panel level to basically the outlets okay to basically the end and um, appliance to the end load article 210 contains details about branch circuit and it contains very specific requirements i would highly recommend you to go through article 215 and article 210